Okay, so in today's episode, we're gonna take a look at how we can use this displacement map coming from substance source. So it's, it's this here height map we're gonna use as a base here and extend it so we get these funky looking patterns within this pattern. Okay, so this is where we are here without displacement. And let's go in here and take a look. I made a separate tutorial how to set up italic portion of this. So I'm gonna link in the description. So here we have my displacement map. I'm just gonna apply this one here on a Pixar constant first. So we can see here how it looks onto the object. Textures here I projected in Mari as a tree palm projection using this coming from sampler. So this is what we have to play with. The first thing we need to do to get any displacement going in Render Man is to add a render geometry settings. I'm just gonna drop down one of these nodes here, like so. Then you need to specify what geometries you wanna be able to displace. In my case here, I'm just gonna take everything under this snail group here. So I'm just gonna take, drag this snail group into the primitive slot, and then I'm just gonna do slash star star like so, essentially all geometries under this. Then you need to go into the Render Man tab here and say Prototype Attributes. You see here, Enable Displacement, Set and Create to enable it. And then you also wanna add the radius. We're gonna look at that later. And you wanna have something above one. So let's, let's say like 0.2, for example. So this is essentially how many units you can max displace. So if you set this to one, if you have a, well, a Z brush displacement, you wanna uh, increase this a lot more, depending on how much you're intending to, to modify the surface. In my case, I'm just gonna displace it very little here. So 0.2 is probably more than enough. Now let's go back into my material library, go into my displacement and take a look here. So we need a few ingredients to displace something. We need a displacement node, so a Pixar displace. That's the main one. I also drop in uh, two extra nodes when I set up displacements. You could essentially just route the displacement map straight into the scalar here. I like to have additional control. So you do a Pixar. We want to have a displace transform. This one. And this one is responsible for transforming and, and also choosing what is the zero value. If you, for example, have a texture that is 0.5 in value, zero displacement, uh, this one can transform that. And then we wanna have a displace scalar layer, like so. Let's go in here and do some adjustments here. We wanna take the result here of the result R into display scalar into the disp transform, result float into the base scalar, and result float into this one, this disp scalar. We can actually jump back here and to see here when I connect, see if something happens. And now if I connect now this disp displays here into sub output on this builder node and see here what happens. Yeah, you can see it goes nuts. We are displacing a lot we need to adjust this. So the first thing, you know, I, I do on this one is to set zero value. I'm thinking this map goes from zero to one coming from um, substance source. I'm gonna set this, the, the remap value to 0.5 in my case here to see here what happens. So that shifts it slightly. We still have a lot here. So we need to take this amount down here on this disp scalar layer. You see here, it's set to one. So let's try 0.1 first and see here what happens. It's still a lot. So this, this asset is, is really small. So the values here are quite extreme. Um, let's set it zero, zero 0.02. Uh, now we start to get something that's more similar to what we saw in that material. If you want a layer displacement, let's say that you want to have a secondary displacement on top of this, you can do that. We can take the same uh, map here and do some trickery with this map here. I'm going to disconnect my displacement temporarily here and hook this one up here to my output. I'm going to do a threshold, pixel threshold. 
and it's going to be evident what I'm going to do here. I'm going to take portions of this displacement and tweak it and then layer it back so it gets a kind of like a secondary displacement that looks kind of different. So let's see here. Yeah, so this one, we can use this crunched version and displace in in some areas. So let's see how that looks. Okay, so I'm going to unhook this one here reconnect this one so we can see here we want to take a look here i'm just gonna hook this one up here uh, to the displacement and i'm gonna now start to take a look at this this transform a bit further here so we want to essentially cut into these forms here using the same map and the threshold i don't want to shift this surface here so let's take a look here what happens if i essentially make a this displacement transform this transform I'm going to hook this up into the base here so we can see here what happens and take a look here. So now we essentially, when this is center, uh, when the remap mode is set to none, we are displaced from, from like zero, essentially. Let's take a look here. If I say center, let's uh, look at this um, surface here and see if it starts to shift or not. So you can see here. Essentially, when I have this one displacement center set to one, now essentially the top of this histogram, what's gonna be white, is gonna be zero value. So essentially this is gonna be the max it displays, so one, and anything else like the black is gonna go in. If I set this one to, to zero, then essentially the black part is gonna be where it displays from. And, and you see here, I shifted the surface out now. So to be able to essentially, I'm just gonna plug this one back into my displacement map here. And we, we wanna now use this displace transform to in the center, dig into this. So with that in mind, I don't wanna shift essentially the, the border area or the border surface. So I'm gonna, take my displacement center to one, set this one to my display scalar layer two. Now I should get essentially something digging into. And we can see here, yes, I've used that threshold to, to refactor the displacement map. And now I'm using that to dig in. And let's see if we can get a column sticking out as well. I just need the secondary threshold and the secondary displaced transform. I'm just gonna now very quickly re uh, hook this one up because I want as want to inspect the um, the map we're working with here and I'm gonna disable displacement temporarily so we want to make this one either even smaller and then use that one to essentially in some areas have uh, have the center go out again like so those one can go out I'm gonna turn on displacement again on the main node and let's see here what happens if I now essentially hook this one up into layer two and we have to enable it this will probably just go nuts here now yeah i'm gonna take the gain down to zero and start to tweak this here we want to do the reverse so the displace transform instead of one i want to have this the center to zero and then start to introduce this parameter slowly to see here what happens to get this to work I'm gonna switch this layer 2 operation over to from add to multiply and let's see here what happens that works the best for this so you can see here now if I start to multiply if I set this to to one here we're gonna multiply I'm gonna get this raised uh, essentially centers in in some of them here because I'm adding that essentially multiplying that together with the result of the, the previous one now we have made a new displacement from this using a few thresholds and and it kind of looks a bit psy psycho here so i encourage you to try out also these blending modes here because you have here in the layer node you have add over subtract average and i uh, found out here that multiply works best if i want to then essentially makes this uh, raised islands and using uh, for example um llama we could essentially apply a different shader on this as well for example here i applied two different subsurface materials using this mask so let's take a look here so this is uh, essentially what i did i created two llama materials 
I have here Llama Subsurface and Dielectric. I'm gonna go more into Llama in upcoming episodes, so I'm just gonna touch this briefly. But essentially here, I used this threshold node where I poked out the interiors as a mask to drive where I apply this uh, red and this paler material that's essentially poking out within this structure resulting in this this type of pattern so if i would go in here and now change for example the threshold here you can see here now they are shrinking and i also applying these two two different materials dynamically with this threshold node so we're gonna touch more on uh, llama in upcoming episode i just want to touch base here on the displacement side and i'm gonna also gonna make this uh, base displacement available so you can download and and, and test this for yourself onto this asset that's also available on my Gumroad. So yeah, go and check it out. And also I'm going to link here to a playlist with additional random tutorials if you want to take a look as well. Okay, see you in the channel. Bye-bye.